Good evening, everybody. I would like to call our December 20th uh, Board of Education meeting to order. Please rise for the flag salute. Okay, Mr. Boyce, can you do the roll, please? Yes, Mrs. Van Horn. Present. Mr. Sergio. Present, sir. Mr. Jess. Here. Mr. Carlson is absent. Mr. Pontillo. Here. Mrs. Kraska. Here. Mrs. Dale. Here. Mrs. Sherwin. Present. Mr. K Mr. Kimmick. <laughs> Present. Mrs. Fabrizi. Here. Okay. Uh, public notice, adequate notice of this meeting in compliance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975 entitled the Open Public Meetings Act has been provided by action of the Board of Education at its regular meeting on December 7, 2021. Notices to the Courier News and Star Ledger circulated in the school district and a posted notice to this effect on the Board of Education website and Building Bulletin Board, Administrative Headquarters, 51 West Cliff Street, Somerville, New Jersey. At this time, we have uh, reached a public comment session of the agenda. Uh, this is public comment invited on any matter related to agenda items. Would anybody in the audience like to make a public comment? Okay, seeing none, is there a motion to close public comment? So moved, sir. Mr. Shadil, second. Second. Mrs. Van Horn, thank you. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Extensions. Okay, public comment is closed. Approve all the minutes. Resolve that the Board of Education approve the minutes of the Board of Education meeting as follows: November 20, November 15, 2022, regular meeting, and November 15, 2022, executive session. Second. Mr. Van Horn, second. Any discussion? Okay, Mr. Boyce. Yes, Mrs. Van Horn. Yes. Mr. Sergio. Yes. Mr. Jess. Yes. Mr. Pontillo. Yes. Mrs. Kraska. Yes. Mrs. Dale. Yes. Mrs. Sherwin. Yes. Mr. Kimmick. Yes. Mrs. Fabrizi. Yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Boyce. Okay, uh, for board president's report, I'll keep this uh, somewhat brief tonight, but first I want to thank every, no, not thank everybody, I want to extend uh, a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever holiday people are, are celebrating in their homes. Uh, just, uh, I wish everybody the best uh, during this uh, December, month of December leading into the new year and a happy new year to everybody. I wanna say that up front before, before I forget because I have a tendency to, to get ahead of myself sometimes. Uh, I wanna thank um, Mr. Jess and Mr. Sergio for just um, trying to outdo each other a little bit there. Um, you know, you just can't touch that, I know. And he's got scarily two other suits just like that at home that, that he pulls out. And then he mixes and matches every so often, which is, um, strikes the mood so uh, but I, I think it's great that uh, you know again we reach this point in the school year uh, reach this point in the year itself and and I hope everybody has a, a safe and, and happy holiday season um, I also want to extend congratulations to our educators of the year um, I, I won't go into the names right now because I know Dr. Teen is going to actually tell us who they are in his report but uh, it is something again I think is quite an honor uh, everybody that um, is actually uh, acknowledged in that way, was nominated by a member of the community, either their peers or parents. Uh, it, it's something, again, that I think uh, the people that um, you know, hold those positions and are nominated for those positions and acknowledged in that way should just be extremely proud of the work that they do as professionals. I think it epitomizes really the profession itself and is something, again, that uh, we should all recognize in terms of the excellent work that they do and who they represent as well in terms of just educators uh, within our community, but also across the street. Um, I wanna point out on the agenda as well that um, a challenge a lot of districts had, um, you know, throughout this year in particular, but last year is substitute teachers and bus drivers. And, and I do wanna point out that we have a number of substitute teachers that are being approved tonight. We have um, bus drivers that are being approved tonight. I think this is something again that uh, the administration's been working really hard on in terms of making sure that this is a place that people wanna come substitute. Uh, it is a type of thing where that's been evaluated, analyzed very much so, same thing with bus drivers. And, and I just wanna thank everybody for their efforts in terms of making sure that we're able to recruit subs, making sure that, that um, you know, that's an area that, that we continue to address. Um, I also wanna thank uh, the board and the community for the opportunity to serve as president the last two years. This is 
uh, my final meeting as, as a board member. Um, and again, it's something, again, that um, I've been very proud to serve. I've been very proud to serve in the position of president. I know I've made a number of mistakes, you know, and I've learned a quite, quite a bit as I've gone through this. But, um, you know, it's very humbling to kind of be in a position like this. And it's something, again, that uh, I just want to thank my colleagues on the board for entrusting me with that responsibility for the last uh, two years. And, uh, and again, thank you to all of you. You know, um, you know, I've had the opportunity with everybody in this room to kind of interact in some way, and, and, and I just appreciate uh, all the work that people do and the efforts that have been made. So, so I'll keep this very, very short. Again, happy holidays, and, and, and I wish everybody the best. All right, Dr. Tien, I'll turn it over to you. Based upon what you just said, Mr. Kimmick, um, I'm gonna jump ahead of you for one second then. Ashley, uh, Brian wants to do something real quick. So Mr. Kimmick, on behalf of the Board of Education, mm -hmm. I'd like to present you with this small token of appreciation for your years of service on the Board of Education. Thank you for always advocating for the highest quality education and for your dedication to the students of Somerville. Now we'll go to the student board representative report. And Ashley, you're the only one tonight, so I guess it's your show. All right. So first off, I would like to start off by sharing something student council has put together this week. It's Spirit Week um, as we lead into the holiday break. So Monday, students were encouraged to wear all white. It's called our Winter Wonderland, so it's very dull, very white, <laughs> just very white. Um, walking through the halls, not much color, but it was like from Winter Wonderland. So um, today was Twinter Tuesday, so students were encouraged to dress with a friend, um, share a twin outfit, so many doubles, many duplicates. Um, and tomorrow it's hot or cold, so you basically choose between your favorite holiday and dress, or favorite holiday, favorite season, and you dress for your favorite season. I will be dressing for winter, not because it's my favorite holiday, because it is freezing out. <laughs> um, Thursday, it's holiday dress codes, so I'm sure you two would like this one. Wear <laughs> winter Santa hats, reindeer hats, um, holiday clothes, ugly sweaters, whatever you would like. Um, and Friday, to <laughs> <laughs> um, Friday, we end with pajama day, which I'm looking forward to that one. And on Friday, the student council will come into homerooms and be coming around to collect money that will all be donated to the Children's Hospital of Pennsylvania. Um, yearbooks are now on sale. So um, you can order your yearbook at balfour.com and you, or you can scan the QR codes throughout the buildings. There are posters hung up by yearbook. Um, and be sure to order yours as soon as possible because there are limited copies and also it is a bit cheaper to order it now compared to when they come out in the end of the year. Um, on December 15th, the holiday choral concert was a huge success. It's, um, I know everyone enjoyed it from hearing all the students, all the teachers, everyone said it was a very nice job. So I praise all the students who put that together because I know I could not. Um, the winter sports are now underway and are in full swing. So the boys basketball team won a thriller on their home opener Friday on December 16th. They beat Warren Hills as they scored a buzzer beater to win 42 to 40. And I know the pack kind of stormed the court. It was very cool to see. Um, and the boys are now 2-0 and they're playing tonight against North Hunterdon at home. Um, the girls basketball, basketball team has their home opener Wednesday, so tomorrow on December 21st, and the girls also won their first game, so both basketball teams off to a solid start, and I know the swim team, wrestling team, fencing team are all, all off to good starts as well, and lastly the hockey team combined with Bernard's High School um, has had a good start to their season. Um, the crocheting and knitting club they met yesterday, uh, Monday, December 19th, right after school in room 205. Um, beginners were taught basics of crocheting and knitting, and more experienced crafters had the freedom to create new projects. And I know at the end, they're planning on making a team quilt. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, explore your crafty skills, learn something new, you can email Mrs. Gornick if you have any questions. Um, Key Club is partnering up with Genesis Club to collect socks for hospital patients to keep warm during the winter. Um, you can help make their holiday season a bit brighter. You know, they're not in the best state right now, so I know from what I've heard, their smiles when they deliver those are awesome. So the box is located in the front of the main office, um, and obviously try not to give socks with holes in it, um, brand new <laughs> socks. Um, 
Literature Club, they celebrated the holiday season today after school in room 211. They served cookies, cocoa, and also re did some holiday readings. So um, everyone is welcome to join that club. Apex Lab will take place on Mondays and Wednesdays from 2.30 to 3.30 in room 108 when school is in session. Um, they request that you bring a charged Chromebook. Um, Men's Choir um, is every Wednesday after school from 2.30 to 3.15. It is open to any student at Somerville High School, even if it's your first time singing or you've never sung before. If you have any questions, please email Mr. Noah or come and visit room 120 by the auditorium. Uh, student Movement Against Cancer Club, this past week they've been selling candy grams. Students could purchase a candy gram for $1 and write a little note to their friends that would come with a candy cane. Um, these were delivered today during homeroom, and I got one, and I didn't was not expecting it. And it put such a smile on all the faces; everyone was jumping up like they were kids in a candy shop. Like, where's mine? Where's mine? Um, the late bus Branchburg Transportation offers a late bus to all Branchburg students. You must sign up for the late bus by 1 p.m. in the main office each day. You would like to take the late bus. Um, the bus departs from the front of the high school each day at approximately 4:30. If your club or extra help end earlier than 4.30, then you may wait in room 109 or with a staff member. If there are any questions about the late, late bus, you can ask someone in the main office. Um, I would also like to congratulate the students, the student of the months for November. For ninth grade, it was Thomas Flood and Emily Smith. 10th grade was Maya Vidal and Sean Yates. 11th grade was Bianca Garcia and Miguel Madragon. And 12th grade was Maxwell Brogan and L. Campbell. So congratulations to those students. Keep up the great work. I know they're representing Somerville High School in a great way. Um, I won't share the names, but congratulations to the educators <laughs> of the year as well. Um, I've had a pleasure to get to know both of them, and they're very much well-deserving of that award, and I'm very happy for them. Um, and lastly, we have a half-day Friday on December 23rd as we prepare for the holidays and going into our winter break, which is much needed to take a reset and start the new year on a good note. So that's all I have. So. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now for the long-awaited names. Uh, the Teacher <laughs> of the Year and the Educational Services Professionals of the Year. At the high school, it was Lindsay Lockwood. She's a Spanish teacher. Amy Opowski, the athletic trainer. And at the middle school, it was Nicholas Petronco, who's a science teacher, and Jessica Warner, who's an interventionist. And at Vanderveer, it was Samantha Ackerman, who was a first grade teacher, and Paige Agnello, who was a social worker. Congratulations to all of them. They are much deserved. For Vanderveer. <laughs> For Vanderveer, Vanderveer Safety Patrol was sworn in on December 9th in an assembly held before the students and families. Tracy Noble from AAA, Officer Vito and Officer Nicky from the Somerville PD, and Mrs. Strecco, VDV Supervisor of Student Affairs, led a training session with the students about their roles as safety patrollers for Vanderveer, emphasizing the importance of being safe, respectful, and responsible on school grounds, and during arrival and dismissal from school. Six safety patrollers were selected from their safety patrol interest essays to receive a ride to school in an official Somerville Police Department squad vehicle. Rumor is they had donuts on board. <laughs> the Vanderveer Phys Ed Department, led by Mrs. Bremen and Mr. Bogart, have planned the first ever holiday hop to take place in the multi-purpose room. The room will be transformed into a winter wonderland, probably a lot of white, and with decorations and lights brought in by students to represent their family holiday celebrations, as well as donations by staff and school community members. The students in preschool through fifth grade will participate in and lead organized dances introduced and practiced during the physical education dance units of study. And parent-teacher conferences took place last week and gave the parents, guardians an opportunity to meet one-on-one -on -one with their students' teachers to discuss their progress through the first trimester. Parents who were not able to attend their selected times do have the option to reschedule this conference with their child's teacher directly for Somerville Middle School. On December 8th and 9th, the SMS 8th graders heard firsthand about the instructional and extracurricular opportunities that await them at SHS next fall. On the 8th, Mr. Hudson and student representatives spoke about the many academies we offer that are available to students, which include Somerville Medical Sciences Academy, Somerville Academy of Liberal Arts, STEM Academy, and Tomorrow's Teachers Academy. 
The following day, December 9th, the students were greeted by the SHS marching band and choir students as each group performed and highlighted what it is like to be part of the band and choir programs. And on December 19th, all SMS students had an opportunity to visit the Sky Dome. The Sky Dome is an inflatable and portable planetarium that allows for students and teachers to explore the planets and solar system in our school. This was a great experience for all of SMS. And on Thursday, December 22nd, come out for a night of great music performed by the students of SMS. See everyone there. That concludes it. All right, thank you, Dr. Tan. Um, Ashley, I want to thank you for that great report. You did an awesome job being the only student rep here, so congratulations. Uh, this is your opportunity to yeah. scoot out, so go ahead. All right. Thank you. Thank you so Happy holidays, though. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. All right. Thank you, Dr. Tan. So we're going to move on to uh, the report of board items and committee reports. So we'll start with finance, security, and buildings and grounds. Um, Mr. Pontillo. Okay, um, facilities report at Vanderveer, they refurbished two water pumps and they inspected the expansion tank. In the middle school, they repaired an Airedale unit and they added unions to the boiler regulators and modified the vents. And at the high school, uh, they repaired an Airedale unit. For all three facilities, uh, work orders are being completed in a timely manner. <coughs> Finance. Motion to approve items one through nine be moved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools. One, the okay. board secretary. So, so much to, just a reminder, we don't need to re, we don't need to read each item. So we'll okay. just do one through nine. Um, is there a second? Second, sir. Okay, Mr. Sergio, is there a second? Is there any discussion? I wanted to bring up something about mm -hmm. number eight, the obsolete materials. Um, number nine. Um, I noticed that a lot of those were science materials that were no longer needed by, I believe, the middle school. Um, a lot of those materials seem like they could still be used, like rocks and soil and things like that. So I feel strongly that it should be offered to the other schools to see if it's needed um, before we agree to get rid of them. Okay, can we just review process on that? Yep. Just for a moment, either Brian or... So, so we do occasionally uh, have requests from principals mostly to dispose of instructional materials that are, no, are worn or no longer useful in, in current curriculum. So in this case, it did run through the director of curriculum as well. So um, there is a, a couple of options once the board does um, approve the disposal of those resources, but um, in light of your comment, we'll certainly talk to the other schools and make sh certain that they have no need for those resources mm -hmm. before we take the steps to actually dispose of them in accordance with the policy. Okay. So just to clarify, if we keep it on, we're going to approve um, that you're authorized to dispose of them, but before the disposal takes place, we're just gonna make sure that we're, we're following up <coughs> any item that might be on that list that it's shared and that people can identify if there's something that would be of value. Is that, is that satisfy the, the request? Yeah, yeah, okay. as long as um, that is offered before. Okay, great, Thank okay, you. any other discussion? Okay, so we have a first and a second. Um, Mr. Boyce? Yes, Mrs. Van Horn? Yes. Mr. Sergio? Yes. Mr. Jess? Yes. Mr. Pontillo? Yes. Mrs. Kraska? Yes. Mrs. Dale? Yes. Mrs. Sherwin. Yes. Mr. Kennedy. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Puntil, you want to just make that next motion? I'm oh, sorry. I'm uh, sorry. Where, where am I at? You're looking to I make a motion to approve items 10 through 13. I make a motion to approve items 10 to 13. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you. Good job. Okay. <laughs> Six seconds. Second. Um, I got sidetracked over here. That's all right. Uh, Mrs. Van Horn. Okay. Was a second. Any discussion on those items? Yeah, if I could. Um, Mr. President, I had sure. the opportunity to speak with Mr. Boyce about item number 11. I just want everybody to be aware that the bids for the track came in about $400,000 under what the project budget was. 
so I think I thank uh, Mr. Boyce and also Bill Edwards, who is our engineer who's handling this, for the excellent job that they did. And hopefully that's a sign of things to come with uh, costs, you know, dropping in the supply chain and things like that. So, you know, that, that's a very good price that we got for the field to replace it. Thank you for that comment. Uh, any other comments related to these items? Um, I just was curious if this was routine maintenance or if it was needed. And I just want to, you know, it, I found out that it, it is needed. It's not routine maintenance. It's something that is needed for safety purposes. So I feel like that's important for the public to know. Yeah, and this is something that's planned for as well. So I think, you know, um, thank you to Mr. Boyce. He, he's really good in terms of just uh, making sure that those capital outlays are addressed and that, you know, the long-term planning is done on those. So uh, but that's great news about about the uh, the really competitive bid that, that, that was received for that. So that's I'm outstanding. Gonna be, I'm going to be doing a field, too, so that's encouraging. Oh, there you go. All right. Okay. Um, okay, and no other discussion. Uh, Mr. Boyce, can you do a roll, please? Yes, Mrs. Van Horn. Yes. Mr. Sergio. Yes, sir. Mr. Jess. Yes. Mr. Pontillo. Yes. Mrs. Kraska. Yes. Mrs. Dale. Yes. Mrs. Sherwin. Yes. Mr. Kimmick. Yes. Mrs. Fabrizzi. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you for that. So moving on to technology and curriculum and instruction, Ms. Fabrizzi. Sure. Um, so we met last Wednesday evening. Um, and Mr. Boyce was here discussion um, mostly centered around the development of the budget for next year. Um, Ariel was talking about how she and the department spent the, the last few weeks uh, working on that and they updated the five-year refresh cycle for uh, the students' devices. Um, so we were talking about that Chromebooks would be distributed in first, fifth, and ninth starting in the next school year. Um, and now we'll be purchasing rather than leasing. Um, so there was some discussion about, you know, extras and loaners to kind of fill in for devices that don't make it. We, ha we had a good conversation about, um, you know, kind of <laughs> what happens to the fallout of the, the kids the who, were, who were in fifth grade who, who then like fall through the cracks a little bit. Um, to extend the use of those devices to catch up with the cycle so there are extras and um, it, it's uh, it's been thought through so that will be covered um, clear touch panels so this is why you don't use your phone because everything opens and then you, and then you can't <laughs> see. I mean, she has um, oh, clear touch panels were not all purchased it's at once serious. oh look you could read that I wrote it you think that I would know what I said but I don't um, so the, those those big panels, you might know them as a smart board. They were not all purchased at once, so they are budgeting to replace the broken ones and those that are coming to to the end of their life. We have more discussion about the computer labs. If you remember, we've kind of talked about this a few times, and the needs are ever evolving for what the kids need to learn. And you think about the shift that everybody has their own device now. A computer lab is not for going in there and doing your word processing. Sometimes they, they need the power to um, to be able to learn what they need to know. So they are um, tweaking the refresh cycle to address the needs of the four different labs uh, more specifically. Uh, Computer Science Week, um, I guess was officially celebrated at Vandiver the week of December 5th, but Ariel was talking about that really being an ongoing thing that kind of happens all through December. K-2 did coding events and had parents come in um, who work in the field uh, to talk with the kids. A uh, great example of using the resources and just getting out there and using the community to expose the kids to more opportunities. For three to five, the STEM had choice boards so they could follow their interests in coding. The website is continuing to be updated. Each school now has a spotlight at the bottom of their homepage. Library updates. We always have um, nice, robust conversations about the library. Seems like it's in good shape. Book circulation has been going on smoothly at Vanderveer. The new librarian has started. She has the student government helping with the shelving, which is really nice mm -hmm. to, to see them um, pulling the kids in um, to the system. The next step is to get new furniture to make that a more welcoming space. Um, Andrea, Adriana, and Ariel went to the New Jersey Association of School Librarians Conference, 12-4 uh, to 12-6. So they got to hear about some topics, including, but not limited to, STEM with storybooks. 
and building a diverse collection to match your community. So that's a nice opportunity for our librarians to meet with other librarians from uh, across the state. The new transition to their new library management system has been successful. It was Destiny, now it's Access It. So teachers can check books in and out for their classes using Access It if the librarian isn't there um, or it's just kind of an off time and they need to do that. And the system also helps with tracking books and getting them back into the library. Uh, for curriculum and instruction, we talked about the seal of biliteracy a little bit more. We uh, have 105 students registered for 108 tests in Spanish, French, Arabic, Vietnamese, Chinese, Mandarin, and Danish. Um, so Christina was talking about working with building admin to schedule the five testing sessions in January at the high school. They've also arranged to install foreign language keyboards as needed so the students can toggle back and forth for the symbols and characters that they need. Um, world language at the high school, the supervisors and teachers studying the STAMP fours test, which is the seal of biliteracy test, so the district can better equip the students to take the test. We talked a little about ESSER funding. This money is used to focus on enhancing student achievement. A new coordinator began in the role in September. This was someone who's already in the district but is now serving in that role. Um, so part of those duties are collaborating with central office admin and the business office regarding the programs and funding, um, collaborating with the teachers and all the buildings to support the ESSER funded initiatives, maintaining communication with the building principals to develop plans for materials, PD, and other activities that are needed to increase student achievement, like assemblies, and tracking the spending in the ESSER accounts. Vanderveer, <laughs> um, the ELA focus. So we talked about supporting the improved collection of the, the IRLA ERLA data um, to monitor student progress. Um, they are supporting grade four foundations implementation. So if you don't know, that is a um, little more concentrated on sounding out the sounds versus the idea of the sight words. Uh, there's been some ARC professional development for new teachers. It was a one-day PD and classroom visits and early demos. Uh, so the teachers assess the students, but there is a team that includes the whole grade level, two Title I interventionists for reading, there's an intervention for math, and supervisors. So the grade levels meet in their PLCs. They look for patterns, strengths, and areas of support that exist in the data. And then from there, they can design their instruction. Um, BDB has a data wall also, I think we've, we've started kind of talking about this. That includes information from a variety of assessments. So it's not just the computer-based assessments that, um, that spit out the data. Um, everything that's collected by the teachers um, can be looked at on this data wall so that different eyes can track the student data, not just the classroom teacher. But of course, the teachers are still keeping grade books. And we had continued discussion about parent communication and just understanding the, the reading programs. Preschool, lots of activity in preschool. The Department of Education school visit happened, so that's two NJDOE members who visited the early childhood classrooms and observed uh, some of their lessons. They met with the superintendent, building administration, instructional coach, and director of curriculum and instruction to share feedback. And the liaison also wanted to see some elementary math programs. So suggestions included enumerating the building, um, meaning uh, kind of making numbers all over the place so that the, the students are seeing them and are exposed to them in ways other than direct instruction or the little activities at their, their tables. So they like to see more math manipulatives and math vocabulary. The liaisons liked the tools in the kindergarten classrooms and felt the transitions were strong. They shared how to provide multiple opportunities for kids and let them see there's always more than one way to do something. Um, there was some feedback about the speed of information delivery. So the way I am talking to you, we cannot talk to the students because as it is, it's very hard to, to process that and our little brains you know, need a little more time. General education preschool program should also be including three-year-olds. Pre-K vice president, vice principal, and instructional coach attended the NJASCD Early Childhood Summit 
Sessions attended were titled The Why and How of Phonemic Awareness Instruction and Leveraging SEL in Early Childhood. These participants learned to create collaborative partnerships between general and special education to ensure every student has access and opportunities. Participants also learned about the research behind explicit phonemic awareness instruction and steps for training phonemic awareness. And so now the master teacher instructional coach will be attending PLC meetings to focus on objective 3B, which is solving social problems um, and, and help kind of turnkey some of these skills um, with the team. I think that's it for me. I know it's very long, but I just feel like uh, it's all important and um, everybody, everybody should know what's going on. That's great, thank you. <laughs> Uh, before we go to the motion, are there any questions for Kristen about the report? Yeah, I, you know, I for one appreciate the thoroughness of it. Uh, <laughs> I, I think the background information is really important for the board to understand. Um, there's a ton of work I know going on around uh, the primary grades and pre-K, and it's it's just something again that um, you know it's great to see that there's such an emphasis and, and focusing on that and making sure that um, it's followed through on. So. I may just ask, I know I noticed that you stated there were two professionals who went to um, learn about uh, explicit phonemic awareness uh, instruction. Now, was that part of they're going to then attend uh, the PLCs and then turnkey that information? Okay. okay, all right. So I believe that's for preschool. Okay, I just wanted to. Right. And I think it's important for everybody to sort of get that picture too of when the when the NJDOE decides, okay, we're sending people to preschool, everything that's on your plate that, that you're trying to drive and you're trying to do now kind of stops because guess what? DOE is here. So now that's what we're doing. <laughs> so, you know, it's important to kind of see the way that works. Now it's it's drop everything and it's someone else's agenda. So you know, it's important to just understand mm -hmm. how, how that world can work. Yeah, okay, great. Thank you very much for that report, though. It's very good. Um, so we had the motion for the case. So Ms. Van Horn, you want to do that? Yeah, motion to approve item, the item one through two to be moved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools. Okay, is there a second, second. for that? Second. That was uh, Ms. Sherwin. Okay, any uh, discussion? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Boyce, you do a roll, please. Yes, Mrs. Van Horn. Yes. Mr. Sergio. Yes. Mr. Jess. Yes. Mr. Pontillo. Yes. Mrs. Kraska. Yes. Mrs. Dale. Yes. Mrs. Sherwin. Yes. Mr. Kimmick. Yes. Okay. And motion to approve that items three through seven be moved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of school. Okay, can we have a second, please? Second, second sir. Mr. Sergio. <laughs> Any discussion? Okay, uh, Mr. Boyce? Yes, Mrs. Van Horn? Yes. Mr. Sergio? Yes. Mr. Jess? Yes. Mr. Pontillo? Yes. Mrs. Kraska? Yes. Mrs. Dale? Yes. Mrs. Sherwin? Yes. Mr. Kimmick? Yes. Mrs. Fabrizzi? Yes. Okay, Mr. Sergio? I, uh, well, yes, thank you, Mr. President and Mr. Vice President. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, as of right now, we, we defer the, um, the next committee meeting until January. Uh, obviously, that will be contingent upon committee assignments for the next year, and so that should be announced uh, once those committee assignments are formed. Uh, and that in that time, the 23 athletics and activities meeting schedule will be set up as well. Um, with that said, I, I wanted to say a happy holiday season to all the Bill faithful out there. The stockings are hung by the chimney with care, with the hopes that peace in the Bill and goodwill towards all residents will be there. Tis a season, no doubt, to be jolly, especially for real winter sports and activities. And I shall start. Now, uh, Mr. President, um, I know we've created the fastest five minutes in bill reporting, and I don't think I've, I've always exceeded that time. So I don't see tonight, your last meeting as board president, being any different. Um, so with that said, I'm going to bring you the not so fastest five minutes in bill reporting. So first, I'm going to really quick, SMS sports are off to a strong start as ever with the boys basketball teams at 3-2 and two and the girls at 4-1. and one. Uh, I also want to congratulate Amy Olpaski, our dedicated trainer, um, on her Education of the Year uh, honors as well. 
we're going to go to Boys Hoop, Coach Navolo and the Villa Hoopsters are off to a holiday start at 2-0. and Very thanks, many thanks to athlete, uh, ooh, excuse me, Ashley, and I'm sure I'll be repeating some of the things she said. Uh, Gavin Cred leads the effort with 12 points while chalking up seven rebounds of his own to hold off a second half charge by the streaks of Warren Hills. Okay, on December 17th, that was a breather as they handed Roxbury a 59-32 victory loss. Quinn Caron was hitting from everywhere, chalking up 18, while Brady Shire crashed the boards to collect eight rebounds. The Bill is home tonight against a 1-0 North Hunter squad, scores TBD. The girl hoopsters, Matt Melisergo, Mr. Eminem himself. The shooters are quickly off to a 1-0 start, I don't think that's correct, defeating the Pirates of West Windsor, 44-22. On Saturday, Kaylee Lauber led the charge with 17 points and burgled the ball six times in that effort, while Nicole Rinaldi secured 12 rebounds of her own. Test number two, is tomorrow at four against Mount St. Mary's. Okay, and right now they'll also be home against American History tomorrow. Okay, sorry, I repeated that. Boys and girls fencing, Coach Harry James. They are 1 0 with a victory against Gil St. Bernard's last Thursday. The Sabre scoring goes to Cook Manny and Jacob Scott that Scott with three wins each. Foil records go to Jeffrey Tabora and Zachary Tees each season, Tiston with three each. All right, um, the Epi scores go to Maddie Dewright and Matt Hobie. Okay, the Sabres will be rattled again here in the Ville as they take on Voorhees at 4 o'clock. Scores TBD. The Swimmers, okay, under Coach Chris, Chris Cooker, just when the Ville foes thought it was safe to go back in the water, the Ville Freestylers is scaring everyone out of the pool. Last Wednesday against Gill, they took, they took first, third, and fourth in the 200-meter relay. Coop DeVille Lutz and Kayla Kovacs took second, third in the 200-meter freestyle. Is there a Fabrizzi in the house? Logan Fabrizzi and Jessica Ortiz schooled the rest of the pool in the 200 yard in uh, IM. So, and Braden Nguyen, Ethan Shaw, and Kaylee Fabrizzi ran the table with a 100 meter butterfly. Yep, they did. That's right, they <laughs> did. Okay. <laughs> so, the field wrestling team under Coach Nick Cassetta will be hitting the match tomorrow, 1221, against Warren Hills, and Friday against Bridgewater. Both games shall be on the road. BSM, Bridgewater, Somerville, Middlesex, Ice Hockey. Your two-time Sherrod Cup champions are at it again. Tied for second in the MC SSIHL Haas Division standings. The BSM triad has already put the biscuit in the basket 18 times in four games, and they're out of the gates with a 2-1-1 record with their loss coming to West Mars. There are 11 kids, 11 Somerville kids on the team this year, which is definitely up from last year, showing that how, you know, give blood, play hockey is alive and well here in the Ville. So tonight they're lacing up the skates against Mars Sussex at the home of the Devils at Prudential Center. So lots of Christmas cheer to be shared this season. If you wanted to get in the Christmas spirit, you need to you needed need or need day to attend these winter concerts. The Somerville a cappella choir performed two shows in the last two weeks. The first was the multi choir ensemble, and I was there at my church, the First United Methodist Church. Uh, Nick Noah, who's really doing an excellent job when the baton was passed by Karen Gorzinski. He has arranged an acoustic, acoustically beautiful performance with over nine high school choirs that night. Uh, the choir's Heavenly Winter Choral Concert was last week. I unfortunately couldn't make that. Uh, also performed last Thursday. The Chamber Choir also brought Somerville to life on Saturday, singing on Division Street, not to mention the carols by Candlelight at White Oak Park. The VDV Christmas Concert is performing, I think, as we speak tonight. And uh, as always, conductor Stephen Loretti is hosting. Thank you, Dr. Team. The always anticipated Somerville Middle School Winter Concert this Thursday. This is where the concert band, the jazz band, and the chorus perform. And he always, he always caps off the holiday season. And let's also recognize Miss Mina Batra, we've all seen on social media, who was invited to the 2022 New Jersey All-State Chorus. Okay, she was selected to perform alongside 300 other students across the state. Okay, Tyler Kazar, thank you again. You hit a home run all the time. Okay, the robotics team, the Mr. Robotos, I shall call them, okay, wrapped up their teaching series called the 102 University. Students learn from mentors and student leads about various topics, including Arduino programming, leadership, troubleshooting, and fire safety. The team is psyched to begin their official season on Saturday, January 7th, where they're going to learn this year's challenge. From that point, they have six to eight weeks to design and build their robot. So I can't wait to report on that. This season is actually the 25th year. So uh, just to, you know, it's really, just to put that in perspective, that's a quarter century that, that the 102 gearheads have been in action. So um, college, college signings. Uh, I, let me just go quickly go to the text. 
Thank you, Director Davis. Okay, Ty Akins, the sales baseball, living the diamond life. Liz Cleary, Duquesne for lacrosse. Hashim Hobbs and uh, Hashim Hobbs Harris for the Sacred School, uh, Sacred Heart football. Brandon Keller for Scranton baseball. Mike Carino for la playing lax in Richmond. Austin Sheets, Eastern University for baseball. And Colby Stepflug, Rhode Island, Rhode Island College for baseball. So, and I also reported on November. This is one of my favorite favorite times reporting on the student success and where they're going to go and take their passions for character education so and you know like I said I was always I'm always a lot of five minutes um, I'm going to just use this platform now also just to say uh, Bill Kim I don't know how I'm gonna say this but you and I've served together in multiple community engagements over the last uh, 15 to 20 years whether it was baseball basketball um, marching band, you name it. Uh, I've had the privilege of serving on this board for some time, and I've served with many exceptional leaders, and you are one of those as well. Um, you know, uh, your exceptional, exceptional again, working knowledge of education policies, procedures, you know, the resource that you serve, and the knowledge and experience that you have that you share with all the other board members. And just my personal tribute is the fact that one of the things I admire about you the most, I'm getting mushy here, is the fact that you and I can have a conversation and you will explain something to me in a way that I'm going to understand it. And you have an excellent way of having that ability to talk to anybody and share, share your knowledge. Um, you, you definitely provide unconditional when it comes to the relationships that you build and the friendships that you hold. And I just want to say it's not goodbye because I know we're going to work together in some capacity somewhere in some community engagement, and I just can't wait for that to happen. Excuse me again, and just want to say to the man, thank you. Thank you. And oh, and with that, and with that, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, that's my report. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Shapiro. And I, I will miss your reports, you know, but I, I won't tune in to watch them. <laughs> I, will miss, I will miss them. That's why I love you. That's great. Um, uh, our equity report, uh, so I was the chairperson of that committee. We met on uh, December 7th. Um, we actually, I thought, was what well, was a really good meeting. Um, we, we met... Uh, Twice over the past two months. Um, at this meeting, uh, Dr. Tian provided us uh, a lot of information just about student subgroups within the district, just trying to understand better um, the number of languages spoken within the community. Uh, it's, you know, from, from you know, your explanation of the seal by literacy, I mean, it, there's, there's just a, and most community members probably don't realize the number of languages that are spoken in the homes of our students. Um, you know, it is really something that uh, is. Is impressive to see and it's something again that I think we need to acknowledge within our schools that 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 is uh, the nature of our community right now uh, and that's a strength you know that's something we have to see as a strength and that's something that I think that uh, we should have as a source of pride in terms of, of the way our schools function and, and in terms of our community as a whole and that's that's why I love living in this community you know that's one of the reasons that, that we decided to settle here um, so we, we had some discussions about student um, Data by subgroups. Uh, we looked at performance information. Uh, Dr. Tian shared uh, again just uh, some information about the iReady results from a different perspective, perhaps than the curriculum committee uh, had viewed them or what the board had seen earlier. And then what we have also decided to do it as as part of our process, uh, the equity committee. And I, I think we're we're excited about this from the perspective of, of developing the board's capacity and understanding of what's actually happening within the schools around equity. Each school has a school-based equity committee. Uh, we invited the high school to come to this meeting, so Dr. Tian made arrangements for the, uh, the administrators from the high school to come and provide a, a really detailed explanation of the work that they've done um, and the analysis they've done around student tardies, really looking at the idea of, of students being at school and being on time for school is critical for student success, student performance, but they've also really evaluated uh, the process that they use to uh, engage students around how do we have students come to school and make sure that that they know they're cared for that uh, you know that we're dealing with them as individuals uh, there's a lot of restorative practices that have been put in place rather than just strict discipline it's a matter of engaging students engaging families uh, and really trying to 
um, address each student as an individual. And, and the, the, the analysis that they provided was very, very thorough. I thought we had a very rich discussion about this. I, um, it was something, again, that I was really impressed with the work that's being done at the high school and just the thoughtfulness with which that's taking place. And it's, it's complicated work. You know, these are really complicated issues. Um, but I, I thought we had uh, what turned out to be a very, very good meeting. And process going forward is we're going to invite each school's equity committee to come to a future meeting. And then at the end of the year, we're going to invite them back again just to kind of debrief, debrief with the board again about what their process was, what their success was, what their future work is going to be going forward. And, and I think that that uh, is important for the board to be able to see. And all of you had access to, uh, I think, what was a pretty good detailed set of notes and information that, that people could take a look at if they wanted to. Um, so that's our equity report. Um, any questions, comments? Good, moving on. Uh, our delegate assembly, Ms. Van Horn, do you have a report for that? I do. Outstanding. Um, November 19th, I attended the New Jersey School Board's delegate assembly. Um, Dr. Purnell is four and a half months into his new job and leading that organization. Um, and his goal is to get back to basics and really provide to the <coughs> district school boards what they need at this time that is constantly changing and it's certainly different than it was several years ago. Um, there was also a presentation by the Department of Education Security team and they stressed that they are available for all districts. Districts should not be paying outside firms to come in and advise them on setting up their school security teams, that that is all available through the Department of Education and that New Jersey is far ahead of most of the nation in providing each building with the school security team as opposed to each district. Um, the law that mandates that each, each school have its own security team goes into effect for the 2004 school year and uh, we are far ahead of most of the nation. Um, there was also a policy review uh, for the 6,000 and 7,000 um, units of the policy. And after that was reviewed, 42 policies were renewed. Some old antiquated ones were thrown out. And the next meeting is in the spring. Okay, thank you for that report. Any questions? Okay, great. Moving on, uh, personnel. Um, so I will make this motion. Motion to approve items one through eight. Be moved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of the schools, appointments and salaries are contingent upon verified documentation. Can I have a second, please? Second, sir. Okay, Mr. Sergeal. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Boyce? Yes. Mrs. Van Horn? Yes. Mr. Sergeal? Yes. Mr. Jess? Yes. Mr. Pontillo? Yes. Mrs. Kraska? Yes. Mrs. Dale? Yes. Mrs. Sherwin? Yes. Mr. Kinnick? Yes. Okay, and then uh, for 912 and district wide, motion to approve that items 9 through 22 be moved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, appointments and salaries consisted upon verified documentation. Is there a second? Second. That was Mr. Fontillo. Any discussion? Okay, Mr. Boyce. Mrs. Van Horn. Yes. Mr. Sergio. Yes, uh, up to 12, abstain on 13, and yes, on the rest. Okay, Mr. Jess. Yes. Mr. Pontillo. Yes. Mrs. Kraska. Yes. Mrs. Dale. Yes. Mrs. Sherwin. Yes. Mr. Kimmick. Yes. Mrs. Fabrizi. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Boyce. Okay, we have now reached the old business portion of the meeting. Are there any old business items that board members would like to bring forth? Uh, Mr. President, if I might, I just want to jump on the Luke Shadil bandwagon but not to comment about the athletics because that would probably be a long time if I could match his uh, eloquent reporting. But I just wanna say that, you know, you and I have been in education for over 20 years. Um, we have been friends, uh, both good friends and friends for over 20 years. And in all the years that I've been in education, I don't think any have been more rewarding than the last three sitting on this board with you. You are an honorable man filled with integrity, you have great communication skills. You always have the children at the forefront of uh, your being, regardless whether it's here at this table or when you're out in the community. And I just want to say that I wish you well. Um, I'm going to miss you up here, and I love you. Yeah, love you too. Thank you. Okay. 
Any other old business items? Okay, is there a motion to close old business? So moved, sir. Thank you. Second. Second, Mr. Jess. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Great. Old business is closed. Uh, new business items, are there any new business items to bring forth? Okay, seeing none, is there a motion to close new business? So moved. Ms. Van Horn, second. Second. Ms. Sherwin, is that? Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Extensions? New business is now closed. Okay, we've reached the point of the hearing of the public regarding agenda items and non-agenda items. So at this point, is there anybody in the audience who would like to make a public comment? Please state your name and your address. Carrie Ireland, 96 Ivy Lane, Bridgewater. On behalf of the negotiations team from the Somerville Education Association, I would like to take a moment to thank Mr. Kimmick for his dedication to the Board of Education. During your tenure as president, we have seen enormous growth in the efforts to work collaboratively. You have been an integral part of the advances we have made, especially during negotiations. Your hard work, passion, and commitment to Somerville Public Schools is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. More cookies? <laughs> Not today. <laughs> <laughs> candy over there. Okay. <laughs> it's, been a busy, it's a busy time of year. Stop it. Uh, thank you for your comment. Uh, are there any other public comments? Uh, yes, please. Patrick Frey, 201 Scobie Lane, Somerset, New Jersey. I don't have any cookies either. Oh. <laughs> uh, Mr. Kinnick, the SEA appreciates the time you spent working with us on a mutually agreeable contract. The negotiation team also appreciates the time you took away from your family to meet with us to try and resolve the many ongoing issues and try to help retain staff. Even though you will no longer be on the board, your knowledge and your input will be extremely valued. Please stay involved, and the SEA looks forward to hearing what you have to that. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you for your comment. Okay. Any other public comment? Great. Seeing none, is there a motion to close public comment? So moved. That was um, Mr. Jess. Jess. Mr. Jess will go with. Is there a second? <laughs> Mrs. Van Horn, is there a second? Okay. Um, any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Public comment is now closed. Okay. We've reached point. We're going to enter into an executive session. Um, Resolved that the Board of Education move to recess into executive session to discuss confirmed HIP case number 2022 and 2023 to SHS personnel matters and matters falling within the attorney client privilege with respect to those subjects. The minutes of the executive session, to the extent permitted by law, will be made available to the public once the issues are resolved, subject to confidentiality requirements. Uh, we do expect to take action upon return for public, public session. Uh, we anticipate that this could last anywhere from 30 minutes to 90 minutes. It's, it's hard to say. So, um, you know, at this point, if people are going to excuse themselves, um, you know, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Again, happy holidays, um, and we wish you all the best. And um, we'll take a, a quick, well, first off, is there a second? Second, sir. Mr. Sergio. And the one. Um, can we just do that? Yes. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Okay, the board is now in executive session. It is 7.29. We will take just a quick uh, few minute recess for people to use the restrooms or do whatever you need to do, and then we'll come back. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Be safe, everybody. Enjoy the holidays. Thanks. Okay. All right, thanks. Okay, and uh, we are now returning to Public session. Could I please have a motion to uh, return to public session? So moved, sir. Mr. Sudil, so hanging on with us. We appreciate your uh, tenacity. Um, so, uh, our first uh, motion that we will be taking is relative to a HIB. So, Mr. Boyce, could you read that motion for us? Yes. Resolve that the Board of Education accept the following confirmed HIB case report 2022 2023 2 SHS. Sir, second. Second, uh, actually, it has to be a first. So, Mr. Sergio, would you be a first? I'll be a first. Second. Ms. Van Horn is a second. Okay, is there any discussion there? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Boyce, can you do a roll for that? Yes, Mrs. Van Horn. Yes. Mr. Sergio. 
Yes. Mr. Jess. Yes. Mr. Puntilla. Yes. Mrs. Kraska. Yes. Mrs. Dale. Yes. Mrs. Sherwin. Yes. Mr. Kimmick. Yes. Mrs. Fabrizzi. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Boyce. Okay. Uh, <laughs> our second uh, order of business is um, something that uh, may come as a surprise for some, uh, but we had a fairly long uh, discussion about um, the topic of a letter of resignation for the purposes of retirement that was submitted by Dr. Tian. Um, Dr. Tian has uh, written a board with the intent to resign as superintendent of the Somerville Public Schools for purposes of retirement effective June 30th, 2023. Um, so before uh, I make any comment on that, um, I would like to make a motion to accept Dr. Tian's letter of resignation. Uh, is there a second? Second. Okay, Ms. Sherwin is a second. Okay, is there any discussion there? Uh, I would, if I could, Mr. President, um, I've worked with Dr. Tian for five years, and um, he's always been a stalwart for the education of our children and to make sure that um, they had everything they needed. And so I would just like to wish him well on this next chapter of his life and thank him for his service to uh, the community, the staff, and the students of Somerville. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jess. Any other comments? Mr. Steele? I, I just want to reiterate um, what Mr. Jess says because I had the privilege of working with Dr. Tian. Since, two, since 2013, when I joined the board, um, you know, and with his previous role in role superintendent, he has led the district through some very uh, challenging times and unexpected times that we had. And I want to thank him for that and for his kind of constant drive and his dedication to the district and the students as well. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, uh, I just want to make a personal comment as well. You know, I, I've known Dr. Tian for, for, for quite some time since he came to the district. I've had uh, two students graduate from the district, uh, one who's still in the district. Um, you know, I, I, I know Dr. Tian professionally as well outside of uh, my role as a board member. Um, I just want to thank him for his service. The, the, the role <coughs> of superintendent, in, in my estimation, is just an incredibly difficult job. Um, and to Mr. Sajil's point, uh, we've had some pretty unprecedented times over the past, especially two years. Uh, so I, I do think that, um, you know, this is something that uh, we wish him well uh, in his decision to retire, but also just uh, want to make sure that the community understands the debt of gratitude that, that you know, I feel toward Dr. Tian as well. Okay, so uh, with that, I'd like to make a motion. I may have already done that, and did we already second it? Because I honestly can't remember. And then we had discussion. Yeah, so it's been a while. Okay. Um, all right, with that being said, Mr. Boyce, can you do a roll? Yes, Mrs. Van Horn. Yes. Mr. Sergio. Yes. Mr. Jess. Yes. Mr. Pontilla. Yes. Mrs. Kraska. Yes. Mrs. Dale. Yes. Mrs. Sherwin. Yes. Mr. Kimmick. Yes. Mrs. Fabrizzi. Yes. Okay. Uh, we have an additional motion. We have two additional motions. Um, so I make a motion uh, to terminate the contract um, of Shank, Price, Smith, and King as board attorney effective immediately. So moved. Second. Second. Sorry. Mr. Sergio, any discussion on that? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Boyce, can you do uh, a roll for that? Yes, Mrs. Van Horn. Yes. Mr. Sergio. Yes. Mr. Jess. Yes. Mr. Pontillo. Yes. Mrs. Kraska. Yes. Mrs. Dale. Yes. Mrs. Sherwin. Yes. Mr. Kimmick. Yes. Mrs. Fabrizzi. Yes. And the last motion, uh, I make a motion to appoint the law firm of De Francesco Bateman, Kunzman, Davis, Lehrer, and Flaum as board attorney and labor attorney effective immediately until June 30th, 2023. Sir, second. second, sir. Mr. Sergio, second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Boyce? Mrs. Van Horn? Yes. Mr. Sergio? Yes. Mr. Jess? I will abstain. Mr. Puntillo? Yes. Mrs. Kraska? Yes. Mrs. Dale? Yes. Mrs. Sherwin? Yes. Mr. Kimmick? Yes. Mrs. Fabrizzi? Yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, so that finishes our actions that we're taking out of executive session. Um, I want to thank the board members for the discussion within session, also for the, 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 I think, the really good discussion that happened during the board meeting tonight as well. Uh, I want to wish all of you uh, very happy holidays. Um, for those celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas. If you're celebrating any other holiday, happy, happy holidays. holidays. <laughs> um, so uh, with that, can we have a uh, motion to adjourn? So moved, sir. Uh, Mr. Sergio, second. Second.
Mr. Sherwin, second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? And we are adjourned at 9.22. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you. We're not out yet.